conspiracy theory out that kids are being shipped in armoires uh, to, I guess, pedophiles who are buying them on Wayfair. Now, I have to tell you, uh, on the surface, (laughs) this makes no sense. And looking into it, you can really see this makes no sense. And it's a it's a really dangerous conspiracy theory for a couple of reasons. Um, Wayfair, first of all, is a company that is doing good. I don't think that they're shipping any children in armoire. Stu, could I get an amen on that one? Uh, well, I've ordered many pieces of furniture from them, and never has a child arrived in any of the boxes. Right, which I'm happy about. So this is this is like Pizzagate, and I think Pizzagate was another dangerous, dangerous story. Um, because that one endangered people. This could easily endanger the people at uh, at uh, Wayfair if people believe it. Um, it involves a, uh, a a portion of the Russian conspiracy. Go, you know, you have to use the Russian Google to be able to put the SKU number in, and then you see the pictures of the children. No, you don't. No, you don't. And the reason why I think this is even more dangerous is because. This actually is happening, and and uh, child abduction and child sex slavery is worse now because of COVID than it has been possibly ever. Uh, we have Tim Ballard from Operation Underground Rest, uh, uh, Railroad and uh, also the Nazarene Fund on with us now. Uh, did, did you buy your kids on Wayfair by any chance, Tim? Did you get some? Because they were going fast, I hear. <laughs> Yeah, they sold out apparently from what I saw. No, that yeah, there's no evidence at all that, that Wayfair was involved in this. But I, I'm glad at least people are listening and looking and becoming aware to the fact that it does happen. And 2020 has been the worst year ever, uh, ever maybe in history for children. Uh, we have abandoned them at every turn. Uh, the unintended consequences of this lockdown, Glenn, I mean, we have literally millions of additional reports more this year than at the same time last year from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children because these kids are home and we're, we're told they're told to sit here with your laptop, with your smartphone, and mom and dad got to go scavenge for our, our jobs and our foods and whatever else. And the pedophiles are home and we're chatting with them. I mean, we are we have labs all over the world and we uh, see the, the, the uh, communication and they're basically saying it's harvest time. And it is, it's harvest time for these kids, Glenn. And uh, the, the reports, we won't, we won't even know the consequences for years to come with millions of lines out that we know these pedophiles are catching our kids. Just, just the other day, uh, a guy in just 30 minutes from my house was gaming online with two six year old girls from Indiana. Luckily the cops caught him. He convinced these six year old girls while they were gaming the parents didn't know that they could game with someone online. Um, and these six-year-old girls end up sending the naked pictures of themselves to this 42-year-old sick Oh, my guy. gosh. You know, and, and this is happening all over. And it's thanks to the fact that we're ignoring science and locking our kids away from the people that protect them, their teachers, school, and so forth. Very frustrating. So, Tim, when you said when you said it was harvest time, you you mean that literally that they are actually online. You have seen them in conversations, pedophiles saying this is harvest time. Oh, yes. They are giddy as can be. I mean, there's two million children who are forced into sex slavery every year. So consider the, the number that justifies that demand, the number of pedophiles out there. And they are talking on the dark net and we are watching them. And they are literally saying things like, or even directly, it's harvest time. Can you believe this? They're sitting ducks. These kids are just sitting ducks right now. And they are. They're home alone with their, with their laptops and their smartphones. And the pedophiles also can't work. They're home alone. And they know how to access our kids online through gaming, through just through Facebook. They know how to go undercover and trick our kids. And they know how to get them. This is, this is what they do. And we're just sitting here. So, our, our, yeah. Uh, no, go ahead. We're just sitting here. No, we're just, we're just sitting here as a society, and it's, we're not even considering this as part of the debate when we're talking about opening schools or, or locking down economies and shutting, you know, keeping teachers away from the kids and so forth. We're not even talking about the, 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 what's happening to these kids. It's, the FBI made a uh, – they, they warned the nation in March that this was, this was going to happen, but no one seems to care about this. 
you know, and then one crisis leads to the next crisis. And here we are in this next crisis. And, you know, what happened to George Floyd is grotesque and illegal and horrible. But what are we going to do now? What does defund the police mean? I mean, it's just like defund the police means that from what I can tell so far, we're going to defund the proactive police units because those are the first to go. Proactive police units are the ones that are required to rescue kids. So it's like how many times in 2020 are we going to fail our kids by refusing to bring them to the table? Kids can't riot. They can't protest. They can't organize. And so they're quiet. They, they, we have to be their voice. And I don't see anyone doing it so far. So um, let's talk about the things like Pizzagate and uh, Wayfair. Um, those kinds of things, they do happen, do they not? I mean, are, are oh, things being sold? Because yeah. what was the... Uh, what was the the uh, the village voice? I think it was had a section where they were actually helping pedophiles buy and sell children. Wasn't it the village voice? Oh. Yeah, no. This is. I mean, I spent I spent years of my life, Glenn, pretending to be a, a, a ten year old kid that sits online to see what people will do to him, and and we've caught I've caught dozens and dozens of pedophiles who tried to buy me as an undercover kid or, or real kids, I've caught them on Craigslist, on Facebook, on every social media platform you can imagine. 100% they do this and they do use code words. Um, pizza was one. That's why the pizza gate that used that name. There was a time when if you're looking for a child, you talk about, I want to order a pizza and that you'd put a Craigslist ad up like that. And then, I mean, we were in the, I was in the middle of that for, for, for a decade. So absolutely this happens. Children are sold online on social media platforms there's no question about it okay so tell me about your thoughts on um uh, epstein uh this case really bothers me for for multiple reasons he got away with it for so long he said he was in intelligence we know that maxwell's father was also in intelligence overseas uh, all these really famous people were involved. What the what? What was that, Tim? I mean, you used to be um, in the government trying to uh, stop all of this stuff. Do you believe this is? Is there more to this than we think? I think there is more to this. I think everyone should watch uh, the uh, Epstein Netflix documentary to understand how this yeah. guy got away with this for so long. Um, but what he is doing, Glenn, truly is being done by millions of P Americans. You watch the Epstein story. Now, he's different. He's more influential, and he's connected to influential people. And I hope that, that more comes out with the, with the recent arrest of his, of his girlfriend. Um, but this is happening. His story is not uncommon. His story is the story of millions of pedophiles living in this country. We are the highest demand for child rape videos in, in the world. We are in the top three for destination countries, traffickers wanting to get their kids into our sex markets. So this, this is the plague of our, of our generation, so... and, and it's happening every day. And, it's, it's, uh, and we're, I don't know how to wake the world up. July 30th is um, Anti-Human Trafficking Awareness Day. So we at OUR and the Nazarene Fund are going to get super, super loud on that day uh, and try to rally the troops and get people to rise up and be outraged for once, <laughs> for once, get outraged. On something for, for on something practice. that we can do something about. Be outraged yeah, on something exactly. we can actually do something about. I, You know, I, I worry about uh, our country, Tim, and I, and I know you do, and, and you were part of Restoring Hope. Uh, and, you know, we are a nation, if you just, if you read scriptures at all, you've heard over and over and over again, he says, I can't save, I'll, I'll save the righteous remnant, but I, I can't save, I can't save you anymore if you go into unrighteousness. And we are sitting here tolerating things, and we have to do something that shows the Lord that, no, 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 there, there is a group of us here that, that re, we care, we, and we want to do something. And it's not all about politics. And I, I think the best thing we can do is to become abolitionists, as we talked about in, in Restoring Hope. I agree, Glenn. You know, there's, uh, if we want to help God bless America, because he's waiting for us to help him bless us, uh, there is one thing he's, he's told us that makes him uh, more uh, upset than anything else. I mean, he almost gets, he gets violent in word in Scripture, talking about if you hurt kids, I'll, 
better than a millstone be wrapped around your neck and you toss into the sea. I mean, those, those are violent words, but they're righteous. I mean, we know how he feels about this. Let's get on his side on this one. It's an easy one to get on his side on, and let's liberate these children right now. 